really lovely to meet you all. Sorry, I've got a bit of a tickly cough today, so apologies in advance. Um, yeah, really, really great to meet you. Thank you, everyone, for your time today. So uh, my name's Steph, and I run an organisation called Life After Cancer. Um, I started this in 2018 after my own experience with cancer. So cancer shaped my life, as I'm sure it has for lots of you here. So I create this space to support others in um, yeah, creating theirs, basically. So today we're going to look at how to increase our mental well-being. So I often come at workshops um, from a point of view as if you can take away half of the workshop, um, that's a positive for me because I'm aware that I'll give you some coaching exercises um, that hopefully will fit with you. And I'm going to try and give you as much as possible. And with the idea that we kind of throw at the wall and see what sticks. OK, so we've got quite a lot to get through in one hour. Um, I use my phone just to keep to timings. So if you see me with my phone in my hand, you know that I'm not playing on it. I'm just using the timer. Um, and that's so I can just get as much out of the hour and give you as much as I can in that hour, okay? So I'm gonna share the screen. There's gonna be a little bit of working on your own. There'll be a little bit of group discussion and there'll be a little bit of pop you into breakout rooms to chat with one other person, okay? Does anyone have any questions for me before we begin? Okay. Just letting someone else in. Okay, let me share my screen with you. Can you all see that okay? Could you give me a thumbs up if you can see it? Wonderful, thank you. All right, so, <clears throat> sorry, increasing mental well-being. So for adults who have finished cancer treatment. So today we are going to begin with some journaling. We're going to clarify what you need in order to increase your mental well-being, and you will leave with some actions and an accountability buddy to move forward. All right, so just a reminder that before we start this workshop, that these workshops are here to support you. If something in the workshop brings up a feeling or emotion that you'd like to talk through, I'd like to remind you that you are not alone and I encourage you to seek support and speak with friends, family, your GP, your oncology team, and your specialist. Sorry, I'm just gonna mute some individuals just because otherwise there's a little bit of feedback. Maggie Centres and Macmillan Centres both offer free sessions with a trained counsellor and the Samaritans can be contacted anytime for free on 116123. If you feel overwhelmed by any of the content in the workshops, please feel free to step out, take a breather and come back to the workshop if and when the time is right for you. We do not pr provide or recommend medical treatment nor meet medical needs. Our focus is on increasing the physical, mental, emotional and social well-being of our members and building social connections and resilience. If you have any medical questions, please ask your oncology team, regional clinic team and or clinical nurse specialist. OK, so what I'd like you to do is um, we're going to start with some journaling prompts. OK, does everyone have a piece of paper and a pen? If you don't, please um, go and grab one if you can. So what we're gonna do is, this is just a bit of a kind of download, a bit of a check-in with yourself, okay? And what I'd like to do is, I'm gonna give you five minutes on your own to just sit down and you use this time how you want. I pop some prompts on the screen. So this could be, what do you really want? So you could write down whatever comes up for you. What is it like to be you right now? So write down your answer to that. Or you could write a letter to yourself from the perspective of, of an unconditionally loving imaginary friend, okay? Or you can write down anything that comes to your mind right now. And I say that because um, sometimes some of us have just, you know, had a bit of a morning, we've rushed to the workshop and we feel like actually this thing is taking up capacity in my head. So feel free to use this five minutes, whatever you need, okay? But I put these prompts on the screen um, yeah, if you want a question for yourself right now. So I'm going to pop five minutes on the timer and I'm going to pop some music on and I'll come back to you in five minutes, okay? Does anyone have any questions for me before we start that? Okay. Right, I'll pop five minutes on. Thank you. 
Okay, <clears throat> that's your five minutes. Welcome to those who have just let in. So we just spent a few minutes just checking in with ourselves during a five minute journaling exercise. 
So now I just want to talk about mental well-being before we move on to our first exercise. So mental well-being doesn't have one set meaning. We might use it to talk about how we feel, how well we're coping with daily life or what feels possible at the moment. Good mental well-being doesn't mean you're always happy or unaffected by your experiences, but poor mental well-being can make it more difficult to cope with daily life. And just a reminder today, this workshop is here to support you to increase your mental well-being or to just help you work out actually what do I need to do in order to, to increase my mental well-being. So there's an exercise in coaching called drains and radiators. Some of you may have heard of it before. And this is about thinking about what drains your energy and what fills you with energy. Okay. So what I'd like you to do for five minutes is have a think about everything that drains your energy and everything that fills you with energy okay these could be chores they could be activities they could be people they could be conversations um they could be thoughts that you have could be your environment could be behaviors absolutely anything everything but what i like you to do is just split them into two okay and i'm going to give you five minutes to do that I'll pop some music on again. Does anyone have any questions for me before you start that? Okay, so just having a think about what gives you energy and what drains your energy. All right, I'll pop a five minute timer on. Just to note as well, if it's helpful, I've popped some examples down here of things that drain my energy and give me energy. So for example, drains would be sitting down all day with no breaks, um, looking at my laptop, not getting eight hours sleep, eating sugary foods and too much time on my phone. That's the thing that drains my energy. The thing that gives me energy is going to the gym twice a week or just moving outside at least twice a week journaling to write down my thoughts, snacking on nuts or a healthy option, just having one cup of coffee because I always want a second but it never makes me feel good, um, walking and when that sun is shining, just if I can get outside to sit in the garden for a cup of tea, just getting a little bit of sun on my face, okay? So some examples there for you.
Okay, that's your five minutes. So what I'd like you to have a think about now is what you need to do in order to spend more time doing the things that give you energy. Okay, so for me, that would be to schedule the gym for Monday and Wednesday mornings or a walk, to leave my journal next to the bed, or to make sure there are always nuts in the cupboard to save me from reaching the chocolate biscuits. All right, so what do you need to do in order to spend more time doing the things that give you energy, okay? So maybe you could come up with three, and I'm gonna give you, so three actions that is, and I will give you, uh, I'm just looking at my time. I'll give you another five minutes, okay, to check in with yourself. Does anyone have any questions? Okay, All right, I'll pop some music back on.
Okay, that's your five minutes. All right, so I'd like you just to keep those actions aside and we're gonna move on to another exercise and then we're gonna pull them all together at the end, okay? So I don't wanna to give too much away here, but what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna pop three minutes on the clock and I would like you to just write down everything that's going on in your head, okay? There's no right or wrong, this could be words, it could be doodles, um, just take out what's going on in here and pop it on a piece of paper. Okay, and this is a little bit different to journaling because there's no prompt here. So I just want to write down, yeah, anything that's going on up here. All right. So I'm going to give you three minutes to do that. So if you've got a fresh piece of paper and you can write on the back of the one that you've been working on, that would be great. Okay. So I'll pop three minutes on the timer. Does anyone have any questions for me? Okay. I'm mindful as well that I'm kind of just like we whizzing through these and you'll definitely have some discussion in a little bit of time, okay? Mm -hmm. Okay, that's your three minutes. 
All right, so hopefully you've got a page full of random words, thoughts and feelings, okay? So I'd like you to imagine that a stranger has just handed this piece of paper to you and the words on the paper, they're theirs, they're not yours. So pretend it's their headspace. And on a scale of one to 10, one being low and 10 being high, how much would you like to live in that headspace? Okay, on a scale of one to 10, one being low, 10 being high, how much would you like to live in that headspace? So please write this number down on your piece of paper. I'll just give you a minute to do that and think about the answer. So this is you, um, um, sorry, let me see that chat. So Sue, this is you imagining that someone else has handed, it is your headspace, but you're imagining that someone else has given it to you. So you can kind of just take a bit of a step back and you view it like a fly on the wall. How much would you like to live in this headspace? Okay, and then I'd like you to ask yourself, what would increase that number, if anything? Maybe you don't want to increase that number. If you do, what would increase that number? So for example, if I ask myself, how much would I like to live in this headspace? And I'd say a six. And then I ask myself, okay, what, would, what could increase that number? I'd say to think and feel more positive and do something that made me feel more confident. So please just pause and write down what could increase that number. Some people find it really helpful to go, okay, I'd like, it's a six at the moment. I'd like it to be a nine. What would that look like? And what do I need to do in order to make it a nine? Okay, so there's a few different ways you can approach it. So I'll just give you a minute or two just to think about what could increase that number. Okay, <clears throat> so what often happens in this exercise is that people start to notice that um, the thoughts that they're having, the feelings that they're having in their head potentially aren't what they'd like them to be. So when I ask them, you know, on a scale of one to 10, how much would you like to live in this headspace? It's often a number that they're not satisfied with. So I'm just, this is for the people who are in that same boat, okay? If you are happy with your headspace, then feel free to pause for the remainder of this exercise. If you're not, which I often see is the majority, I'd like you to take a separate piece of paper and I'd like you to now just take three minutes to rewrite how you'd like your headspace to look and or feel. You can write sentences, you can write words, you can doodle, okay? Remember, if you're happy with your headspace, this is brilliant, fantastic, just step out of this exercise. But if you're not, have a little think about, okay, well, what would I like to be thinking? What would I like to be feeling? And write this out, okay? Just remember that the way we speak to ourselves matters. So we're exploring our thoughts and noticing the world we're creating in our heads. Does anyone have any questions for me before I pop a timer on? Okay, so just rewrite how you'd like your headspace to look and or feel. Thank you. 
Wonderful. All right, that's your three minutes. Okay. So now I'd like you to just compare both pieces of paper. Okay. And um, just notice what the differences are between them. And what I'd love you to do is just to pop your answers in the chat. Does everyone know where the chat functionality is? I'm going to come out so I can see you all. Does everyone know where the chat is on Zoom? It's just at the bottom. If you're on a um, computer or a laptop, it's just at the bottom there. So if you could pop your answers in the chat, that'd be wonderful. So notice the language that you used. Is it positive? Is it negative? Um, are you being kind to yourself? Are there any patterns that you notice here? I'm just gonna give you a couple of minutes to pop in the chat what you notice between those two pieces of paper. What I notice when I've written again is like, actually I'm a little bit kinder to myself this time. I'm not so harsh. Thank you, Julie. So you, the second one is karma. Thank you, Karen. Chilled, calm and free, not so anxious. Thank you. Thank you, Barbara. Positive. Sue, I'll stop worrying over things I have no control over. Excellent. Thank you, Sue. Thank you, Andy. More relaxed about stuff. Confident. Thank you, Zoe. Thank you, Hilary, more control. Barbara, thank you, organized. Recognize that I need to properly rest both physically and mentally. That's excellent. What a great piece to come out of that. Thank you. Let go of things I can't control. Accepting, thank you. Thank you so much for sharing these all. It's such a, to just kind of, um, kind of reflect on the exercise that it didn't take very long at all that you were giving basically two, three minutes. And just to kind of show that um, the awareness that can be created in three minutes you know I think we often think oh I just can't find time for myself or time to kind of check in with myself but three minutes is 
a very, very small amount of time, isn't it? To give ourselves just to check in and, okay, what's my headspace like today? What would I like to be thinking? What would I like to be feeling? And of course, not everything's within our control. But if we have an awareness, then we, we do have a choice in terms of um, if we want to change that or not and asking ourselves, okay, what could I do to be living in that headspace a little bit more? Thank you, Zoe. I agree with everyone's points. I couldn't have written any of them. Don't let others' stress affect my headspace. Brilliant. So lots of people resonating with them. Okay, so my question to end that exercise, let me just share my screen. For you is what one thing could you do today to take you closer to your preferred headspace? So what one thing could you do today to take you closer to your preferred headspace? If you could pop your answers in the chat again, it'd be really, really lovely just to read through them. If we had more time today, we could have a discussion about it, but I just wanna make sure that you're leaving with as much as possible. All right, so if you pop your answers in the chat, I'll read them out as they come through. a great one Sylvia leaving your phone upstairs Karen making tasks fun by using spin the wheel <laughs> I like that that's brilliant Hillary as mentioned above don't let others affect my headspace thank you Hillary there we go for a walk yeah it's always always a good a uh, good answer isn't it thank you don't let work stress get to me thank you Andy Barbara, remove yourself from distractions. Wonderful, how will you do that? Thank you, Julie, spend a little bit more time on you rather than worrying about others so much. That's a great one. Karen, listening to music, oh, that's a great one too, isn't it? You kind of forget how much a difference it makes you feel. She's put on a favorite song. Thanks, Barbara, finding a quieter room to work. Linny, remembering when I'm not doing anything in particular, I'm resting absolutely and relaxing. Okay, keep them coming through if there's any more. Um, I'm gonna share my screen for now. Um, okay, so what I'd like you to do is to complete this action today. Um, all right, so what I'd like to leave you with today is a chance for you to have a chat with someone else and also a chance for you to talk through the output of the exercises that we've worked on today. So you might have something that came out of the journaling exercise. You might have something that came out of drains and radiators. And from what I understand, you've got an action that's come out of Word River, okay? So you have a 65% chance of completing a goal if you commit to someone. If you have a specific accountability appointment with the person you've committed to, you will increase your chance of success by up to 95%. So what I'm going to do is I'm gonna pair you with an accountability buddy if you're happy to, and they're gonna hold you accountable for your actions, okay? If you don't want me to pop you in a breakout room, if you don't want an accountability buddy, please just pop me a um, message in the chat privately and I can make sure that you're not in there, okay? I completely understand. Accountability works for lots and lots of people, the majority, but there are some people it doesn't work for. I am one of those. I feel like if someone wants me to do something, I'm probably not gonna do it because I know that they want me to do it. So, um, you know, go to check in with yourself. Does it work for you? So you've got your journaling prompt. Is there an action there? You've got drains and radiators. So what three things could you do to spend more time doing the things that fill you with energy? And then you've got Word River. What one thing could you do today to take you closer to your preferred headspace? You've got lots of lovely actions that you're leaving today with. What I'd love you to do is for you to share that with another individual. So I'm gonna pop you into a breakout room for 10 minutes. And what I'd like you to do is you're gonna have five minutes each way and you're gonna talk about what you're going to do, when you're going to do it, 
what support you need from your accountability buddy, if any. You might say, oh, I'm going to give you my number. Can you pop me a little message on WhatsApp? Or actually, I'll send you an email in a week. Actually, I just want someone else to know that I'm going to do it, but you don't need to kind of, you know, check in on me. You just ask yourself, if any, what support you need? And how will you report back to your accountability buddy when you have taken the step or completed your action? So do you want to check in on a Sunday evening and say, oh, great, I went for that walk, you know, two, three times this week? Or do you want to let them know after you've done it? All right. You create this whatever way works for you.